This video is sponsored by Brilliant.org. More later in the video. Hey guys, Griff the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to clean the primary mirror of my Newtonian telescope here. Now, cleaning primary mirrors has a lot of debate around it uh, about the methods to use and, and how to make sure the mirror is fine, etc., etc. So uh, do your own research. This is my method of cleaning the primary mirror. It is a bit more aggressive than other methods simply because of the very sticky Japanese cypress pollen that we get in spring. It's really sticky, it becomes almost like glue on the mirror and standard methods that I've seen uh, taught in the United States to clean that off simply don't work. Also, the method that I'm using, uh, it will be on my Skywatcher 150P Quattro uh, telescope. This par particular primary mirror has a coating on top of the aluminum that is used for the actual reflective surface. And silicon dioxide is pretty uh, resistant to scratches and things like that. So in summary, what I'll be doing is I'll be removing the primary mirror from uh, the primary mirror cell from the tube. I'm then going to be removing the primary mirror from the cell. And then I am going to basically soak it in warm water with a few drops of dishwasher, dishwasher soap and then use my clean fingers and hands to very gently massage the surface of the mirror, find where there are spots of dirt or pollen or anything simply by the touch, the feeling of touch on the mirror and try to remove those. And this is a method that works really, really well in my experience. I've seen it actually detailed in some videos, even from the United States, even though the suggested method is usually to use like a cotton ball uh, and, and swipe it across the mirror under its own weight. This simply does not work for me. Once the mirror has been soaked and the dust and particles removed, then I will be rinsing it with uh, distilled water and then leaving it out to dry. So let's go through the process together. But first, do not clean your primary mirror unless it is hopelessly dirty with stuff. Like normally you want to keep it just like there for as long as possible without touching it at all. General rule of cleaning optics is to not clean them unless you are in an absolute dire situation and your primary mirror is completely fogged over, uh, full of uh, insect excrements or things like that. And again, I'll be depicting my method. Uh, this is a method that Astro La Vista also depicted on his channel a few months ago. So I know I'm not alone. And uh, yeah, please do your own research as well. And I would also not use that method with any mirrors that do not have the silicon dioxide coating. So let's get to it. First, I need to remove the primary mirror cell from the uh, OTA. So normally you do that with the OTA facing downwards so that you don't drop the mirror cell to the ground. Uh, I'll just be doing it this way simply because I'm used to it and I can hold the, uh, the cell in place. The Skywatcher 150P has four screws like this one to uh, hold the uh, cell in place. So they're very easy to take off. Once I remove the screws, I can simply pull it out and here we have the primary mirror. The primary mirror is still head, held in place by some clips. And for me, there's the primary mirror mask that I got from Backyard Universe, which helps get better star shape. So I'll need to remove that, but I'll do that inside uh, next to my sink. So that I, once I remove those uh, clips, I can directly take the primary mirror and uh, rinse it and put it in my warm uh, bath of water. So let's do that together. So here I have my primary mirror. I'll just remove my mirror clips and mirror mask. You can see they're very loose and this is on purpose. This is to avoid a phenomenon called uh, mirror pinching, where if you tighten those screws too much, you can basically deform, pinch the mirror and uh, get it out of shape actually. Obviously you want to be extremely careful with this step as this is a step where you have a metal instrument next to your beautiful mirror. So if I slip, then I can uh, truly hurt the mirror. Okay, I've removed all of the screws so I can remove my primary mirror mask. And we can also get the clips out of the way. Okay, and now I can remove the mirror completely. And here we have the actual mirror removed from the mirror cell. Okay, now that I have all of my workspace ready, let's get the mirror. And what I'll do is first I'll use some air to remove the most egregious kind of dust. Okay. 
and then use water not very fast running water just like slow running water to take care of some of the rest and I like to increase the speed speed and the power of the water after I've removed most of the of the elements so that it can try to take care of like the uh, the harder to remove elements in there the one that are really stuck in place okay so for now I set the mirror as aside and honestly with just that with just I could just now rinse it with um, distilled water and it would be fine like as it is right now uh, but we'll go through the whole process just so I show you so the uh, process I'll use like this is not really adapted I should have like a flatter larger thing but I don't own that so I'll be using this and what I'll do is uh, first I will very meticulously clean my hands so kind of cleaning the hands uh, surgeon style including and most importantly actually the fingertips Right, so you want to make sure that your fingertips are free of any dust, grime, or anything like that. That's really the most important. If you're doing some manual labor, labor uh, as a job with like specks of metals and aluminum and stuff like that, you might have some of those like basically embedded in your fingertips. Uh, so you don't want to use this method. And honestly, for 99% of the cases, just rinsing the mirror in water and then doing the final steps with distilled water is enough right you don't even need to do cotton ball or anything like that okay so with that my hands are clean and uh, i will just rinse this a little bit more this is of course a clean container and i like to have some kind of uh, buffer at the bottom like a clean towel that i put at the bottom of that container and then i'll switch the water to warm water Fill this container with warm water. Here we are. And what I'll do is I'll add a few drops of uh, dishwasher soap. And uh, normally, like people say, like one or two drops for me for the Japanese cypress uh, kind of pollen, pollen, it has never been enough. And I like the feeling of having more dishwasher soap in the concentrated solution here simply because it helps uh, it feels to me that I have more of a layer uh, between my fingers which could get greasy although that's not the case once they've been cleaned very thoroughly and they're in water with dish uh, washer soap but I feel like I have more of a layer between my fingers and the mirror when I add a bit more dishwasher soap so let's do that a little stream like that that should be not too much I can then make it a bit uh, bubbly here we are and I can then place my mirror in this uh, solution okay here we are so I have my mirror in there and the next step will be using my fingers uh, to basically very slowly and carefully I hope you can see yes very slowly and carefully basically massage the surface of the mirror and you need to be like really feeling the mirror and feeling whether there are any hard spots on the mirror that are holding you know that you can feel with your fingers obviously I can feel the donut at the center but at this stage I'm not feeling like a lot of anything else uh, here there's a small spot here so I can just like massage a little bit more but I'm barely putting any pressure that's the method that's what I really like about this method is you can choose the amount of pressure that you want to put and uh, compared to the cotton ball method where it's just like the weight of the cotton ball here you have like much finer control uh, over what you want to do with the mirror oh I feel something here okay there it's gone and by the way, when you're massaging the mirror, if you're using a Newtonian mirror, uh, you should know it's usually a parabolic mirror. And uh, have you ever wanted to learn more about the properties of those mirrors and the mathematical properties of those parabola, how they can be used in optics, that kind of stuff, or about like, you know, math and science in general? Well, the best way to do that then for free is to use brilliant.org. And I literally use Brilliant 
every day. And I think it's the best way to learn math, data science and computer science, like very interactively. I'm almost addicted to it because it really ga gamifies learning, which I think is a really good thing. And it's fun and interactive. And there are many, many lessons available that go from really basic topics to really advanced topics. And there are new lessons that are added every single month. So you never get bored. Regardless of your skill level, you really have content that fits your skill level. Even though I have a master of science, I'm currently relearning and redoing lessons on pre-calculus, which includes conic sections, which include parabola, like the shape of the mirror that we're currently cleaning. And even though I knew, I thought I knew everything about this, I'm learning new stuff while I'm learning on brilliance. And I, I ac absolutely love this. There's a sense of accomplishment that you don't get if you're just like mindlessly scrolling through social media. So if you also want to have fun learning and you want to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, you can visit brilliant.org slash quivlazygeek or you can click on the link in the description. And the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Okay, and now that I've done with both learning about parabolas and about uh, basically cleaning the mirror with my fingertips, I can carefully remove the mirror from the uh, dishwasher soap and water solution. Then I will do several stages of rinsing. I will do a first rinsing with the tap water here. And then I will do a second rinsing with distilled water. So here we are. I angle the mirror a little bit and then I generously drop some distilled water all over the mirror. Now, after that step, it's possible to just uh, let the mirror dry, uh, like you put it in a somewhat vertical orientation and you let it dry. What I do like to do, and some people use um, hair dryers, what I do like to do is to use like an air blower to kind of push those drops out. And now I've managed to remove basically everything from this uh, primary mirror. And it looks absolutely beautiful. Not a single issue with it. It is magnificent. So now it's the time to actually place it back on the cell, which is the exact reverse process uh, that we took earlier. The most important part of this step is to make sure you don't over tighten the screws. I do it so that I have the ability to just jiggle up and down each of the mirror clips so that I'm sure that I'm not like pinch pinching the mirror effectively. Okay, and now that my mirror is clean, I can put it back in the telescope tube, just uh, slide it in and screw back the four screws that we unscrewed earlier. And then I will have to redo my primary mirror collimation. My secondary mirror should be fine. I'm not going to touch it, just the primary mirror collimation, which is much easier. And I'll be using my Ocal collimator for that as usual. And it's all well collimated now, thanks to my uh, Ocal collimator. Uh, again, if you have a fast Newton, you don't have the Ocal collimator, you're missing out. I'm, I'm sure the, the cat's eye collimation is amazing. I've never used it, but oh my word, has this made things easier for me? It took me five minutes and I did have to adjust the secondary a little bit. Uh, maybe because the uh, when I placed back the primary mirror, it was slightly offset again. So that reflected itself in the secondary. But I did have to like slightly tighten a couple of screws. Uh, but now it's absolutely perfect and everything is ready to go. And that is how I clean my telescope mirrors. So again, just as I said in the beginning of the video, the best way to clean the your mirror is to not clean it. The example I gave today in the video with the mirror, the state that it was in, honestly, it could have done without a cleaning. I should have left it in, but I wanted to make this video and I wanted to show you guys what I do. The method works in my experience really, really well. I've actually been using it for years and years and years without any issues whenever I had like uh, telescopes with mirrors. But as you saw in many cases, if you're not looking for a perfect result, if you're looking to just like get rid of the superficial grime that you have on the mirror, just like running it onto like some weak tap water and then rinsing it with distilled water and removing the droplets with a dust blower like this one, it's usually quite enough. You don't need to go and touch the mirror surface. You don't need to use like uh, balls of cotton, that kind of stuff, because really we, we're not looking for a perfect result. Just having my telescope pointed like that right now without the dust cap on, my mirror is already getting dust on it. So as always, keep it simple. Don't clean. 
if you're going to clean, you can do a very superficial cleaning that is basically risk free. And if you're going to, if you have Gran, if you have Japanese Cypress pollen on your mirror, then yes, in that case, I do recommend using that very slight massaging where I barely put any pressure. I'm barely resting my fingers on the surface and I can control in very fine amounts how much pressure or actually lack thereof I put on the mirror. And I honestly, I love doing that. So that's a bit of an addiction to me. It's like there is something that I love about just sliding my finger, which is coated in that basically the dishwasher soap solution across that mirror. I love that feeling. So it's a bit of an addiction for me. Do not become an addict. You know, the best way to not become an addict would be to join my Patreon to help me make more videos like this. Actually, no, it's absolutely unrelated. But if you do want to support the channel, you can join my Patreon link in the description down below. You can also join the channel at, as a member or you could simply subscribe to the channel if you're new, in which case, welcome. You can like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you thought it was an irresponsible video and I should never show people how to clean their optics. Or, you know, if you have other other ideas you want to go and leave a comment about like what is wrong or right about the method that I've been using. And if you are absolutely clueless about how to clean your optics or as I was saying, not cleaning them because that is usually the right approach, but you want to check whether like, okay, is this method correct? Then do your research, read the comments down below. There will be people saying this is a bad method. So you want to go into the details and think for yourself. But with that as out of the way, as always, thank you so much for watching, for supporting the channel, for making this possible. Don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.